Okay, so introduce yourselves and your topic and uh, go from there. Okay. So we did uh, the COVID impact on jobs and working from home. My name is Chris Longuth. And I am Troy Oden. And, oh, there it is. All right, so some background. Uh, for years, it's been normal to work uh, every day, do your job, and drive home at the end of the day. Um, but the uh, latest coronavirus uh, has led many businesses to be shut down or moved to online work. Uh, because of the tech technological advancements, things like Zoom, Skype, virtual, virtual desktops, uh, in the past 10 to 15 years, some companies have the option to let employees work from home uh, during the pandemic. And uh, we found that 43% of employees work remotely uh, just in some capacity, whether it be a day or every day of the week. Um, and we've seen lots of Zoom use in the past three to four months, whether that be uh, business meetings or online classes uh, like we're doing right now. Um, have you done social things on Zoom? Uh, I have, I think twice. I've done just like a, just friends from college that maybe live on Long Island or live too far to see. Um, but usually just text. Um, I haven't really done too much of it. I don't know about Troy, but. Yeah, honestly, not really me either. I haven't used Zoom too. I've, I've had like a couple things. My, my mom uses it more than me, honestly, like <laughs> to talk to the family and whatnot. Maybe I'll come in and say, hey, but I haven't used it too much. I'm not, I'm not a big fan of the whole video chat thing. <laughs> Okay. I really miss face-to-face -face interaction. Okay. Um, so about one in six U.S. workers filed for unemployment in the five weeks following the beginning of the virus, and that totals up to more than 26 million Americans by April 15th. Um, the industries affected the hardest include food service, entertainment, and accommodations, as obviously they were the first ones to be shut down. Um, and they've been hit very hard. There have been sharp pullbacks in uh, consumer spending on retail, business services, and non-essential health care. What's not essential health care? Non-essential health care. It's more like just like daily care, like, you know, like vitamins and whatnot. Just like not stuff that is like life-threatening. It's not the actual virus. It's not stuff okay. like that. Like just people just haven't been taking care of themselves as well during so the So I might not do a facelift? What was that? I wouldn't do a facelift. I can't hear anything. I got to put in my headphones. My phone is going to die, though. <laughs> um, this is a whole mess. Go ahead, Chris. Well, there's a lot of stuff going on. Like uh, my dad, who I said earlier was a dentist, he was deemed non-essential by Andrew Cuomo. Um, and you could argue, I mean, Wegmans is open, you know, there's just a lot of there's just a lot of politics in it, you know? Yeah, there's like a little more politics than I would like to see concerning yeah. this because ju it just seems to be complicating things and making us, uh, driving us further from a solution. Yeah. Well, I, I've seen like, you can, go to, you can go to a liquor store and buy liquor uh, just because of the state. Yeah. Time, but you can't go see your dentist. <laughs> it's a little yeah, ridiculous, you know? exactly. That's how it is right now. It just is what it is. Okay, I got to follow the money, you know? Um, I think what do you think there would have been a problem if they tried closing liquor stores? I think so because all that, yeah, all, definitely. They would have gone definitely. crazy and they would have started, I don't know, breaking into them. Yeah, I think that many people would have, uh, I, I, maybe the general well being of the public would have actually been much lower if they did close it, to be honest. It's not even order online, they bring it out to the car. It's really nice. <laughs> yeah, I know, it's crazy. Yeah, the curbside pickup, like everywhere. Huh? Um, okay. Move to the next slide. This is just a graph, like, uh, visualizing the unemployment claims. It shows like what it was like before and then what happened, how much it blew up during the virus. Um, peaks out around 7 million at the end of March and, uh, the week ending March. And this goes a little past what I said. So this actually ended up topping 30 million by the end of April. Wow is just shocking so many unemployment claims interesting in, the interesting thing i heard is that some people were faking being unemployed 
Yeah. Like they didn't even have jobs before and they would fake being unemployed in order to get the unemployment check. So that's a little exploit of the system that has been going on. Do you think it's a big number or? Of like exploits? Yeah. I don't think it's a massive, like I feel like you people who did it typically wouldn't get away with it. Okay. But I'm like just some people were able to break through the system and get it done. But I feel like most people aren't able to fake it well enough. Yeah. Okay. I haven't went through the process though, so I don't know if it's hard to. I don't know if it's hard to do. I, I couldn't tell you. Generally, you got to re um, they validate your wages with your employer. Yeah, yeah, or exactly. Or with the employer's tax returns to see if you actually did work. And Which is why it. I would figure it'd be fairly difficult. Yeah. I um, I think that what pro what probably would happen. I think about that for a moment. I may be laid off from the job that like you work in the store, you get a W-2, okay. You may be laid off for that, but then like Chris is doing odd jobs for people. Uh-huh. You're yeah. getting cash, right? Oh yeah, cash only, no check. Okay, so I, would, I think you probably have some of that going on more than Oh um, yeah, I mean I've been else. doing, I, I'm actually making more money now. <laughs> I was. It's insane. I mean, it's it just it blows my mind because people just want their stuff done. They don't want to do it. Yeah. Uh, a lot of like I'll talk about it later. Just a lot of manual labor. Just okay. I think we're going to see a resurgence of that. Um, so, all right. Well, so the impact on uh, companies and workers. Uh, many tech sales and marketing companies. Uh, I think we'll see a shift in movement towards employees working from home. Because they just they just can do that, um, and other professional or other companies and jobs that require hands-on work like construction, factory workers, and uh, medical professionals will obviously not be able to work remotely, um, just because they're just right there, hands-on. Um, and it, very interesting, I, I saw that uh, Facebook says that most employees will uh, work at home through the end of 2020. And plans to move half of the forty-five thousand employees uh, from uh, to work from home in the next decade, which is quite interesting. And even Twitter plans to allow workers to uh, work at home indefinitely. Um, and then uh, LinkedIn had a twenty percent increase in remote job postings and a forty-two percent increase in searches using remote and uh, work from home. Yeah, and, like, it's interesting that this was, like, forced, obviously. Like, that we this wasn't supposed to happen yet. Mm -hmm. We weren't supposed to be mainly working from home. But uh, now that we are and, like, we've been forced in this situation, it's interesting to see that most companies are finding that it, it is more – it makes more sense financially. Okay. Yeah. And do you think um, the employees like it? I like, I think it's like a double-edged sword. I think there's disadvantages and advantages, which we're going to get into uh, okay. eventually. So yeah, I'll answer that later. Okay. Um, many food companies have been practicing curbside pickup. Uh, that's like the main one I'm seeing, but the, the other option would be to utilize delivery services like Uber Eats, Postmates, DoorDash all that stuff. But the thing about those is they're very detrimental to the restaurant. They end up charging, uh, wait, hold on, Chris, can you just press one more time? Oh yeah. They end up charging a 30% service fee to use wow. their, um, delivery platform. And th these companies only have about like 10% like profit, uh, margin in uh, for every sale. And that, if you do the math, obviously, that ends up, they're losing money on these sales. Wow. And I don't know, that's just pretty bad to think about. A lot of small companies, restaurants, they're getting hit really hard during this time. Yeah, I see a lot of restaurants in my area just just totally shut down. It's Yeah, it's, and I don't know if they're going to be able to make a comeback, but at the moment, there's just no money coming in for a lot of restaurants. Yeah, because they don't have, they got to pay the rent. And they just started opening up uh, a couple of restaurants I used to work at are just, just started opening up and they're, they're, they were already struggling in the first place. So it's 
crazy to see. Yeah, some restaurants have been – I saw, like, one restaurant in my hometown that um, is doing outside serving, like, having people eat outside. Yep. Uh, but I, like, went into Chipotle the other day, and you're not allowed to sit inside. You can still get food right now. So, I mean, we're getting there, but we're not there yet. They're still definitely taking yeah. big tolls. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Uh, so adv- advantage to working from home, uh, according to the Global Workplace Analytics, typical typical company saves around eleven thousand for half time telecommute uh, telecommuter per year, um, which is a lot of money. Um, yeah, I would say uh, less car use from just driving to work if you're working from home, which uh, res- result in less fluking, which is obviously a good thing. Um, not wasting time driving to and from work every day. Uh, I just I know people who drive one two hours to work and then you have to double that because you have to drive home, and it's a lot of time uh, that you could be spending with doing other things. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Like personally, I I drive thirty minutes to work, and I yeah. think that people who aren't working part time actually do have to drive a decent amount from home. Yeah. We're hopping on Long Island Railroad. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's a bit. Yeah. My brother. My brother and my stepdad that's what that's all they use um have they started riding the long island railroad again no i don't i don't think anyone got on. but specifically my stepdad is actually i think he's going to be in one of the groups that uh ends up working from home after the pandemic just because they saw that it works and he can yeah quality of life yep um, so I, I would say employees would, will uh, save money on things like daycare and gas because they won't have to, they won't be driving as much and um, they could stay home and watch their kids. Um, companies will save money on not leasing office space because you got to put the, you got to put the employee somewhere to uh, work. So I think being at home would just, just gives you a, office space right there and it'll just save the companies a lot of money. Um, employees become less sick since they'll not be able to go to work and uh, be exposed to viruses and sickness, sicknesses. Um, I think it's uh, great for business leaders and employers since they won't have, employees won't have an excuse uh, for being sick, not being able to come to work. Um, even if even if they just do like a half day, it would just it would be better than not coming to work and just wasting a whole day. Um, uh, employee, employees will have more time for work or activities like fitness, spending time with kids, chores, um, how, so just overall be able to get more done. And yeah, just like I said, people just get things done, especially if they use their, their time correctly. And, yeah, kind of on their own schedule. Yeah. Well, so, I think some people can do that well. Some people can't. Um, I personally like that doing being on my own schedule better, but yeah, I agree. I might need the structure. Like, so. uh, How'd you do with your spring classes when you finished them up online? How'd that go? I was actually, my GPA was a little bit higher actually. Oh, yeah. Good. Well, so even, was- even with me finishing my science classes, which I'm just like, you know, not that great at anymore, but I still had definitely had a better GPA than when I was at school. Okay. Were you able to manage your time? Yeah, it's, at at first it was a little bit tough to do just because I've never, I've never experienced home classes and I've never had to do that. So at first I was having a little bit of trouble figuring it out, but uh, by the end I, I started being able to manage my time more efficiently. And I think some, I think maybe some of the, Professors didn't really care as much, so I think maybe some of the grades would are a little uh, more relaxed. Yeah, better than ours. Really like my music class, like instead of quizzes, we just had like these one-page write-ups that were very, 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 very easy. Yeah, some of my classes were all just the same, and just it's still fairly hard, but some were a couple of them were a little easier. Yep, I, I agree with that. I was still doing like four, no more than six hours of work a day. Um, so I was still pretty busy. Yeah, yeah still balance it. Yeah. Um, I also kind of thought of this on my own. I I would think that people with disabilities might 
uh, not be able to work, hmm. that might not be able to work away from home will now have the opportunity to apply for jobs that do work from home. That's really a good that's point. A, that's, yeah, that's true. You know, yeah, that's uh, the first time I've heard that, but yeah, it makes sense. I mean, an interesting way to look at it. Maybe they can't walk or, you know, just maybe they're, they could maybe even paralyze. I don't know. Something like that. I don't know, just a thought, you know. Um, might decrease discrimination or bias since some interviews could be over the phone. It was kind of like, uh, I was thinking about it from the quiz, um, just with biases and all that. Uh, how, like, if you're in person, maybe based on your looks or something, they might discriminate against you. Yeah. Gender. Take a look at the one uh, presentation that's out there on unconscious bias. Yeah. And I, it, it, I think you're going to learn a lot from it. I, 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 I've gone through it a couple of times and I'm like, oh, I never think of bias in some of the ways. But when you yeah. go through it, a lot of it yeah. is. I, I, went through those, I went through that presentation and I thought one of the ones that stuck out to me that like I never really thought of as bias was like the halo effect where if someone like it does yes. something like you just look at them in a, in a high light and you put you them on got it. And I'm totally guilty of that. And I've, I've never really thought about that bias, yeah. but definitely is. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you, that's, I, 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 I fall on that one too. And then the horn one too. If you've done bad shit before. Yep. If you've done bad, if I look at it from a, a teacher perspective, if you've done bad work before, I'm going to assume you're going to continue to do bad work. Yeah. yeah. Where yeah, if you've done good how, work, am I going to be just a little bit more, you know, yeah. There was some yeah, of them, exactly. right? I, we don't look at some of them. And the same thing with the short people, tall people. Um, I'm like, you wouldn't expect that to play in, but it definitely does without you thinking about it. Yeah. I think some of it is just being, um, I'll turn this off, is being aware. Of yeah. We yeah. Have those biases. If we don't know, we, since they're unconscious, we don't know about them, so we can't change any behavior. But if we become aware of the different forms of bias, we can better manage around that. Yeah, honestly, like when I when I, I read think. the when I read the Halo Effect one, like I felt like enlightened. I was like, I, I'm definitely going to use that. Like I'm going to be thinking about that from now on. Like definitely. Right, we lost your sound again. Oh shoot! Is it back on by any chance? I can hear you. We're good now? Good? I can hear you. Yeah. All right. Um, I think uh, being in your own house. Is that both of you guys? Oh. Oh, oh, okay, okay. He lost us. He lost us. Oh. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> okay, there we go. Oh yeah. Good. Okay, try that. Hello. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Good. Yeah. All right. So, uh, being in your own house establishes a familiar and comfortable environment, um, and uh, also anywhere can be a desk. You're not tied down to one spot. Maybe you don't like that spot, and you're not comfortable there. You can move around and kind of do whatever you want. Um, yeah, I did that a lot during the school year. Yep. If I was born in one spot, I'd move to another spot. Yep. Nice little change of scenery in the house. Yeah. <laughs> I'm okay. Disadvantages? Uh, less interaction with coworkers. Um, who will buy up the empty office, office spaces now? Uh, perhaps China. Um, I, I thought that because... You know, there's just a lot of stuff going on with China and they might want to come in because no one's who's going to buy it up if everyone's going online and there's no companies that aren't using it. Yeah. Uh, just a thought. You, you, who knows what they're going to do. But yeah, I mean, they've been they've been making quite a few moves. If you uh, look over at that. I thought I thought interest, uh, an interesting one was in the Megatrend yeah. uh, section where they were connecting Africa. Yep. That, that's very interesting. Sure. It's, it's billions of people. I mean, that's and like yeah, and if you look at the population trend along with that, like that's where the people are going to be. 
you got it. And they're already there. Uh, you got it. That's gonna, that could definitely pay off for them. Yep. Um, so we got another disadvantage could be uh, potential conflicts with employee overlap from personal lives and work lives. It, this goes back to how it's a double edged sword. Like there are the advan like you definitely have your advantages of being, but there could definitely be some like it could bring down efficiency to an extent how much people are going to be home. And like, it's definitely tough to balance. Mm -hmm. um, studies have shown that with lack of human interaction, employees can feel socially and professionally isolated, which also just hurts efficiency on the individual. Um, and I've definitely felt isolated during this pandemic just being all alone and I didn't zoom very much. So I didn't really realize how isolated I felt until I came out the other side. Yeah. I, I um, think that's important. And as you said, a lot of people rushed into this and they yeah. weren't prepared the structure of work. Um, I think it depends too. I mean, human interaction, one, we're doing that right now. We're interacting. Yes. Okay. But, and I think that's good. And I think in a work environment, we got to create these situations where we can engage with each other, but you still miss that in person. Yeah, yeah there's something different. different about actually being in the same room as someone as opposed to talking. Like even, even with video, it's still not the same. Right. Absolutely not. You just want to go out. Yeah, I feel like you could... And over uh, just the computer, you can kind of get away with hiding some of your, so maybe someone has a bad personality trait. Maybe you can hide that. Yeah. You know? 100%. It's not, you're not fully exposed like you are in person. Yeah. And when you get to, um, I think it's this, I think it's the next assess reflection is where you do Myers-Briggs. Yes. And you may find that certain personality types really can get into this. And then there's others who you do it because you have to, but you know, you just want to go out with a group of people and yeah. crazy. <laughs> I, yeah. I, just, we're, we're, I haven't gone. I, I know places are opening up. And outside, I, I haven't gone. I'm still not ready there, but I'm I'm doing things. We have our, our student managed investment fund, and um, we've been we still meet twice a week, and on Fridays we do a virtual happy hour, mm -hmm. which is fun. Well, yeah. Yeah. tomorrow we're doing it, but two uh, two of the folks who are in Rochester are going to help me at the community garden, and we're going to do the meeting and happy hour in person. We're still going to be oh, outside. Oh. We'll still yeah. be distant. That's cool, though. But we'll be together. Yeah. And I think, yeah, that, you know, I've, uh, I've I've seen a couple of my friends. Um, we've limited, you know, it's limiting how many people are there. That's that goes into it. And we've just like been around a fire. We bring our own chairs and we just stay kind of distant. And that's right. like how it's been for right now. And you feel good when that happens. Absolutely, yeah. I missed it so much. Just the <laughs> thing like that. Yeah, that's what we need. I, I feel like I don't know. I don't know if anyone else feels the same way, but uh, it's definitely like I didn't realize how crazy I was going until like, oh, yeah. Well, until, yeah until, like just of, since the beginning of time, we've been, you know, human interactions. It's like kind of a essential thing. Yeah, mm -hmm. we're social creatures. That's just how it is. Mm -hmm. Thrive off that. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Either way, we're going to have to be cautious as we move forward. I know. Yep, hundred uh, percent. It's def We're definitely. It's not over, and a lot of people seem to think that it is, but it, it isn't. Right, and that's what I think. Oh, it still exists. We we, we got to be as a society incredibly aware of that. Yep. That it's not don't, over. We don't know enough about this virus Correct. to just get out there into the world and like assume that everything is safe now. Yeah, just because they are gearing up. And, and if you look at some of the data, it's not declined that much, and we're seeing it really has. 
Yeah, and that's and that's probably due to the behavior of the general public because just now people saw the first news of you know cases going down and they just decided like okay like we're good then. But oh, it's not people on the streets right now, so that doesn't help. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I remember. I remember a couple of weeks, or maybe even a few weeks ago, when we first heard the news. Every time I would drive to work, the roads would be empty. Like there just wasn't anyone on the roads. But all of a sudden, there was this one nice day where it was really nice out, and then all of a sudden there was just traffic. There were so many cars, people walking around with no masks, and I was yeah. like, I was uh. In the bay, the around quite bay the other day, and I was we were on our boat, and there were it was on a Tuesday night, and there were I probably saw at least a hundred to two hundred boats. There's like people everywhere. Yeah, I think people are just trying to get out. A lot of people on each boat. Yeah, yeah, people are just partying, getting out there. <laughs> it's crazy. Yep. I really feel like I really feel like the general public does is definitely underplaying it yeah. to it crazy extent mm -hmm. scary i i wish that we were being smart and everyone was but it's not the case right now no and i think we're in new york state we're new york connecticut new jersey those numbers have clearly come down the rest yeah. of the country hasn't and that's because i feel like yeah, you know like i can talk trash about like everything that's going on and like how people are behaving but we have done a generally good job in comparison to the rest of the nation. Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. There are you, like cautions that we did take were good. You think there's any correlation between the fact that in Connecticut, New Jersey, and New York, those folks with the college education is over 50%? Does that contribute, do you think, that educated people are more focused on what some of this is really happening and not just what somebody says. That's an interesting thought. I haven't really thought of it like that, but it definitely could play in. Maybe the level of education, just people like understand kind of the severity of a situation. They're able to identify that. And process it, yeah. In another state, which isn't as well educated. Right. Because some of the states thought. are down at 20, 25%. Yeah. So, I mean, I'm not saying it's it's neat, but you've got to look at some of this data. Yeah, like there's something. Has, yeah, something has to be causing it. Something has to like. There's got to be a reason for why certain states do better, right? Yeah, which seems to me. Um. Another another disadvantage. I, I think we've we we touched on this a little bit, but we've been rushed into remote work, uh, so companies haven't had time to prepare for their transition. And although we're finding that it is very efficient in terms of like, you know, financial and whatnot, it's still like we haven't set it up the way that it was supposed to. Like plans have already been made to switch to this type of uh, work at, in a lot of companies, but um, this has just been completely forced due to the situation because otherwise they would shut down if they didn't, if they, no one was able to work. Uh, so there's definitely room to improve in that uh, matter. And another disadvantage would be the lack of internet privacy. And I am going to talk trash about this app specifically that we are using right now. Because um, they've been criticized a lot for sending data to Facebook, lack of end-to-end -end encryption, allowing for hackers, and uh, some cases of microphones or cameras being hacked. I, I read an article just... Uh, I think it was yesterday uh, that went into detail about like Zoom hacking and a lot of uh, credentials, a lot of profiles have been hacked and they've been yep. being sold on the dark net and for a ton of money. Like also like account, like bank accounts, like they've been managing to get into that from Zoom. I don't know. It's pretty hackers are definitely they got a big window of opportunity from this whole day yeah, where yeah. so much stuff is yeah. online now these hackers are having a field day now yeah the one thing though some we oh, have was go ahead what were you gonna... oh, yeah, I, we have responsibility too as users and i do unfortunately do a lot of these zoom things and know you can change your name yeah oh yeah okay now <laughs> 
Sometimes if you might be doing a virtual happy hour or goofing around, you may change names to be comical. between a comical or a nature that in a group like this, we would you know, like, well, what better change your name. Uh, yeah. Some yeah. of the mind scene are like, okay. Have you, seen any, have you seen any names since we've been doing this that have been like, oh, that person clearly didn't look. To oh, yeah. Their it took them a minute. It took them a minute. As soon as it got up and they saw the name, you know, I saw, his, I saw his face go red <laughs> and he quickly got rid of it. And then I, oh, I messaged him after. Sounded like a... <laughs> But you laugh about that kind of that's stuff. A, yeah, that's a tough situation to be in, you know? <laughs> yeah. Definitely a goof. Okay. Um, but yeah. Uh, yeah, I'll say one more thing about the hacking, because this is just like a little interesting thing that doesn't really relate to companies. But another thing on the dark web is that uh, a lot of people have been selling like fake vaccines and medicines and whatnot for the meta for uh, COVID. And it's all fake. It's not Did real. buy it? Yeah, people buy it all the time. Like they've been making a ton of. I'm telling you, hackers oh, are absolutely thriving right now. They're making so much money. <laughs> I, don't I like. Yeah, one of my one of my friend's coworkers. He was telling a story about um, his coworker who was saying that he wanted to get like a vaccine for like five hundred dollars for him and his girlfriend. And it's just like we just don't have vaccines yet. So like it's clearly not going to work. Like it's clearly fake. We haven't developed vaccines yet. Yeah. <laughs> Still in the process, but you know, whatever. Too. <laughs> Maybe I'll try that on eBay. I'll I'll come up with some treatment or something. Make millions. Yeah. I think the vaccine. I think there's a vaccine being developed by Canada, but it's not supposed to be like available until I I don't I don't think anytime soon. No. I think I saw it like next year at some point. Yeah. I see. Uh, there's a guy who uh, bought. I think. Uh, 20 million N95 masks for a dollar a piece or something like that. Bought them like three, four years ago, and the government came in and sold them and bought them for five dollars a piece. So he made a wow. million dollar profit. Oh, the government did it? Yeah. Came and bought it? Okay, so it was, I, I thought, it, I thought that, uh, that was going to be illegal, honestly. But no, what but made you buy it. that many masks? I, he was like, I, he was like, we've had so much stuff. Maybe he's, I think he's just, Smart. I don't know. I he think just he predicted. Maybe. Maybe he predicted the pandemic. I guess. Like, I don't know. He's he, like. He he's like. Something's gonna happen again. Pandemic would eventually happen. Which crazy. People have predicted pandemics happening. Like eventually. Like I mean, I saw a thing that uh, Bill Gates. Uh, he predicted that there would be, um, a pandemic within like a decade. Like he said this in like 2016. So, I mean, he was correct. That's just, it's weird to think about. Mm -hmm. Some people got that sixth sense. Yeah. I don't. <laughs> You're not either. <laughs> um, all right, so an analysis of this. Um, let's say that good hard labor will be in more and more demand because of this. Um, plumbers, electricians, mechanics. Uh, just people are at home and they just, they want their stuff done. I know I've, I've wanted, my parents have wanted a lot of stuff that are on their house. And, yep. Um, more yeah, I put a hardwood floor in. Yeah. First floor and in the yeah. second floor. I, I think people are just looking around their house like, oh, we're not, we're home now. I got to get something done, you know? <laughs> yeah. One of my, one of my, um, we expanded their house and yeah. painted their house. Yeah. And uh, more and more people want a job at home. And they like to use their brain. They like to use their college education rather than their body, physical body. And doing physical work, you know, getting your hands dirty. It's just kind of the shift in the past 40, 50 years, I think. Um, I agree to that. Yeah, and uh, most jobs, if possible, should find, I think, should find that balance of staying home and going into work each week. I think going, staying home five days a week would be a little too much. Um, for me personally, but I think just most, for the most American people, I think just maybe half and half would be a good balance. Um, working remotely two or three days out of five 
day uh, work week would be the most productive based on research from the Gallup State of uh, American Workplace. Um, uh, more and more people are trying to find jobs that allow them to work at home based on all the LinkedIn stuff. Um, this might be because it's convenient uh, or maybe better suits their needs uh, because they need to stay at home for kids or whatnot. And uh, Darren Murph, um, head of remote software developer, uh, said the current crisis has accelerated the adoption of remote work by at least 10 years. I think that's just a big takeaway here um, because we're, we've already in the past five years have been seeing this big shift uh, to, towards uh, remote work. I think just, just totally accelerated it and companies are just looking at this and saying, you know, this is why, why have we been doing this for, you know, the past five, 10 years. Um, yeah, like reluctant at first, but found the benefits of it. Yeah. 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 And, uh, yeah, I think they're just realizing the benefits of home work based on this kind of three month free trial they had because of the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, yeah, just like I said before, he's thinking and doing, uh, they're saying, why haven't they doing this all along? Um, and why? Because I, because for decades, it was just the norm to go to work, do the work, come home, and just do that five to seven days a week. And yeah. uh, it's just everyone's been doing that for years. I, yeah, I definitely look at it as a kind of culture shock. Um, just just a, such a different way of life now that mm -hmm. is going on. And it, you see the drawbacks because I feel like the general health of the public has definitely taken a turn. And if we maybe eased into it, maybe we wouldn't have seen that as much. But it is what it is. We have made it through almost people are improving getting better yeah but uh yeah i think that's it yeah what did you guys learn from doing this definitely definitely learned a lot of interesting statistics regarding um working from home i i didn't realize how beneficial it would be never really thought about it like in terms of I, don't, I just didn't know how much work could get done from home, honestly. Okay. Like my stepdad being able to work from home, I would have never guessed that because he would take a train at 5 a.m. every single morning to the city and work there. But I don't know. He just he's able to work from home now, like entirely, and they're not even going to take probably have him come back. It's crazy. Mm -hmm. It is really crazy. Do you think he seems happier? I yeah, I mean, it's like now yeah, but like in the beginning, not specifically. We were, uh, my family, you know, we're all pretty loud, so there was definitely a lot of <laughs> issues with us all being home the entire time. Um, yeah. And yeah, because my mom, she had to do fifty percent of her work at home and fifty percent, um, like at a court. Uh, she's a social worker which I found interesting that they like split it up like that. But uh, now she's back to like 75% at work and 25% at home, Wow, which is weird to think about. But yeah, I don't know. It was definitely, it was definitely conflict between all of, you know, my family just because we're all very expressive and loud. <laughs> Chris, would you, would you love? I, I thought it just overall, like just, I never thought about the acceleration of, I just never really thought of the remote work and uh, how, how big it has become and uh, how it's just, this whole coronavirus has kind of just accelerated it to what we would have been in 10 years. So I don't think if this never happened, we wouldn't have, uh, I think we just put a cap going on this steady increase and I this this just skyrocketed it. Yeah, a disruptor for sure. Um, Did you guys know each other before you worked together? No. Oh, okay. Yeah. How did that go?